Hello, my name is Tryson Jordan, and today I'm going to be talking about the 1931 China floods. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, telling you what caused them. China is home to the third largest river in the world, along with a few more. The largest river is the Yangtze River. Uh, I might be saying that wrong, but I'm trying my best. Uh, it's um, modern Chinese name literally means the long river, which is kind of cool. Uh, it flows uh, 3,900 miles from west to east, uh, and it ends in, uh, at the East China Sea. Uh, the second largest river is the Yellow River. Uh, it is estimated to run 3,695 miles and flows from west to east. Uh, the third river is the Hawaii River, um, and that runs about 690 miles. So just so you know, all three of these are incredibly huge rivers, all in one country. Although uh, there were more rivers there, uh, these three are the ones that played a major role in the floods um, because they all flooded at the same time, which is terrible. Uh, even though this played a significant role in, uh, in the flooding, it wasn't the main thing. Um, po uh, political turmoil and unpredictable weather uh, was more of a culprit than uh, just the rivers being there were. In China, there was a drought from 1928 to 1930, which was followed by a particularly cold and very harsh winter. As a result, snow and ice had built up in the mountains where the rivers originated, and when spring came, they all melted. Not only did this contribute to the flooding, but China was also hit by strong cyclones that year. These storms dumped the equivalent of one and a half times the average annual volume of precipitation in one single month. Although the weather did play a huge role in the disaster of the flood, it wasn't the main culprit. For decades, China had been developing more modern farming technologies, which resulted in a large increase of agriculture. Due to rebellions, wars, and political instability, the government could not monitor the river and keep it healthy. As a result, the land by the river was overused. Dikes and dams meant to control the river were built incorrectly. Forests and wetlands, which helped to regulate the river, were destroyed. As a result, the rivers overflowed their banks, dams broke, and the water rushed across central China in the summer of 1931. And now we're going to talk about the societal and the economic impacts. Uh, back in August 1931, one of the most populous regions in the world was completely underwater. Uh, it was estimated that uh, about 150,000 people drowned in the first phase of the flood. Um, Communities that were poor and a little bit of impoverished, I guess you could say, um, they were left more at risk, and most of them uh, resulted in starvation because uh, the crops that they had stored and the grains they had stored as well were all destroyed by the flood. So they were impacted first and the worst. In most areas, the flooding continued like into the fall, uh, which meant that they couldn't plant a secondary crop. Um, and since China's political parties couldn't agree on anything, it really slowed down the relief uh, to the people in need. Um, and it got so bad that people resulted in cannibalism. Uh, one of the biggest contributing factors uh, to death was disease. Um, and it was really because of everyone had to move around and everyone was around each other and also the destruction of sanitation systems. Um, it just made the perfect conditions for people to get sick. 40% uh, of the affected population uh, was forced to leave their homes, and 61% of the population became refugees. 400,000 people were left homeless. Uh, Flood-related uh, diseases caused 70% of reported fat uh, fatalities uh, amongst rural families and 87% of deaths in uh, refugee camps. 34% uh, 34,000 square miles were completely flooded, and uh, the total mortality rate was 2 million people. The response to such an astronomical flood came from all over the world. People sent China money in response, but despite the donations, China was still in dire economic need. It was a huge challenge to get help, not just because the flood had destroyed much of the communication transportation infrastructure, but also because China was in the midst of both international and domestic wars. The relief project was monumental. Over 1 million workers were employed to reconstruct dikes throughout the first half of 1932. 
In the aftermath of the disaster, the cooperative organizations that had been used to reconstruct farming communities were adapted, becoming a central feature of the government's rural economic policy. The floods of 1931 could have been easily avoided if the river had had better infrastructure and better dams and dikes built. Once China became more politically stable, to prevent floods in the future, the government began constructing many dams, most notably the Three Gorges Dam. When the construction of the dam finished, it was the largest in the world. In addition to helping stop flooding, the dam collects massive amounts of hydroelectric power, making it one of the most effective dams in the world.